This is Dr. Clayton Lane. This will be a demonstration of an arthroscopic subacromial decompression. When you hear about somebody having a bone spur in the shoulder, what they're usually referring to is a buildup of calcium or bone in the front of the acromion seen here. Here's the model of the shoulder with the supraspinatus tendon, infraspinatus tendon, and teres minor. And here you have the acromion above, and the bone spurs you hear about are in this region. Here's a diagrammatic representation of that. You can see how some people have a relatively flat acromion, others were born with or develop a more hooked acromion, and then here you can see the severest version of that. And what that does is effectively decrease the space between the ball of the humerus and the acromion, and that gives the rotator cuff seen here less space to move, and that can result in impingement and pain. So here you see a representation of what that spur looks like as it builds up in the front of the shoulder. And in the video, you're going to see a view from this perspective. This is the camera coming into view underneath the acromion. And what we'll do is use an arthroscopic burr to remove that bone and increase the space for the rotator cuff to move. So here we have an arthroscopic view of a bone spur. The bone is located at the top of your screen. Here we have an arthroscopic burr coming in, into position. And you'll see how we delicately remove the bone of the spur to try to give the rotator cuff more room. Now this burr is about 8 millimeters wide. The rotator cuff is located directly below it. And so I can estimate about how much bone I'm taking away by looking at the width of that burr. There you can see the bone as it's being removed. I've left the bone medially there so that you can see about how much I'm taking away. Now prior to doing this I did insert what's called a radio frequency probe to remove a lot of the soft tissue and lift the coracochromial ligament off of this bone. I do like to preserve that as much as possible as I think it promotes the stability and the uh, function of the shoulder in the long run. And there you see remove that last bit of bone and make the entire resection level. And what I usually do, we'll view this from multiple different angles to make sure that the resection is adequate. Now usually bone spur removal in itself is not a definitive treatment for shoulder conditions. However, we often use it as an adjunct or a supplement to other procedures. For example, if a rotator cuff repair is performed, we want to lift this bone away from the repair so that it won't uh, irritate or rub on the stitches or the repair itself. Now you can start to see that there's a lot more room for the rotator cuff uh, underneath us there, that soft tissue. Now this may look like there's raw edges of bone, but as in the case of many surgeries, the body tends to take care of that over time and smooth off the rough edges. So in summary, the most common bone spur in the shoulder is treated with arthroscopic subacromial decompression. Bone spur removal is usually a supplement to other procedures in the shoulder, such as a rotator cuff repair, rather than a definitive procedure in and of itself. Thank you.